Bear here, aka Peter Freak Out 10, baby. Bring you guys our episode of the Mummy Review Show, where the good movies are always reviewed. Okay, back into our movie review. Alright, now, on today's episode, today's film is one that I actually wanted to get reviewed ahead of time, uh, in preparation for the sequel, which I already saw, but unfortunately, since I already saw it, you guys would know there'd be something going on, but as you guys know, I say this a lot, I've been busy with school, homework, and just work in general, so I didn't get around to it, so I figured why not do it now, uh, Tonight I am going to be seeing Final Destination 3, so figure right now, kill some time, why not give this a review before I head out, and then I'll do my thoughts on the sequel after I get back, and then I'll start working on the Final Destination 3 review later. Um, but this is a film that I actually missed when it came out, I didn't see it, um, I remember seeing the trailer, I thought it was, I just, it wasn't my cup of tea, I don't know why, I just... Threw it off to the side. That wasn't until my dad rented it. Um, and I gave it a watch. And I thought it was okay. I liked it for what it was. But figured why not give it another watch in preparation for the sequel. Since my since even though I remember liking it, what I liked about it, my thought process was completely erased. So figured give it another watch before the sequel. And what film is that you may be asking? That film is none other than Underworld. Now, Underworld is a film made in 2003, and it's... Well, some of it, the first half of it, is actually written and directed by uh, Len Wiseman. Um, he was one of the writers, I should say, because there was three writers on this. But Len Wiseman, for those who don't know, this guy actually did music videos. He did some for Megadeth, uh, Static X, um... He also did commercials for, like, PlayStation and Sony and Ninten the Nintendo DS. Um, and he's helped with props. Um, he did the props for some of Roland Emmerich's movies, uh, Independence Day and Godzilla. Um, because of this movie, he would marry uh, Kate Beckinsale, um, who are now married. Um, and the idea for this film actually came about when Len Wiseman, who wanted to break into feature films, uh, had just had a meeting with Dimension Films who were talking about getting a movie off the ground, and they wanted to do a werewolf film. Um, he left that meeting with that idea in mind and was talking with his friend over the phone, uh, Kevin Jervoix, um, about doing a movie like that, and said jokingly about a movie that involved a fight between uh, werewolves and vampires. That joke suddenly became the main starting point for Underworld. And while it sounded silly, he actually wanted to make the movie serious. And he wanted it to be taken more seriously. And dig deep into a story involving werewolves against vampires. And look at it as like they once had an alliance and kind of explored a bit more. So he started a rough draft and... He talked with a writer named uh, Danny McBride and actually got him to finish off the final script. And Len decided to inject a little bit of science fiction into the mix once the draft was finished. So once the script was finished and they started sh shopping around, they started scrapping up the budget, it was hard for a studio to buy. Everywhere they went, the studio kept turning it down because... They wanted to change it from ma female to male, but Len was like, no, it needs to be to be a female. That was until uh, Screen Gems bought the rights along with Lake Shore, and they started getting their cast together. Uh, originally considered for the role of Celine was Rhonda Mitra, who was the original inspiration for a Laura Croft Tomb Raider, but she turned it down, and they also tried to get people like Holly Berry, uh, Mila Jovovich, um, Bitch, until they met up with Kate Beckinsale. Kate had already been acting. She acted in Michael Bay's Pearl Harbor and was already in a relationship with the actor Michael Sheen, who was in this film. And that immediately died after this film, as you guys know, because the two, Len and Kate, had started a relationship and got married. But she loved the script, and her getting involved helped get the movie into high water. 
after, and it helped attract particular members of the class. Despite it rising them to the top, uh, there were some scenes that called to be trimmed once Kate got involved. Like, there was supposed to be a shower scene with her, but she said no because she didn't want to be nude anymore, so she had to be cut. So that had to be cut out of the script, and apparently that applied to the sequel with her sex scene and that. Um... But they got started shooting in location in Hungary during the fall of 2002, and the character of Celine's design was actually based off a character in an X-Men comic. And for the makeup, Patrick Tatopoulos, who had worked with Len on Godzilla and Independence Day, he wanted the werewolves to look a particular way, like have them naked. Some of the werewolf suits were made to avoid Velcro stems. There was also some CGI, but Len wanted that limited, and... One of them, one of the actors actually suffered a concussion during the making of this movie, but thankfully he recovered. And shooting lasted until this November. And with a budget of $22 million, the movie opened on September 21st, 2003, where it opened to number one at the box office and earned $21 million in its opening weekend. It stayed at the number one spot for that weekend until it was dethroned by the rundown the next weekend. But it finished its run with $95 million at the box office, making it a hit for the company. And I bet they knew it would be a hit because they already had greenlit a sequel and a prequel. I don't know about the prequel yet, but um, we have this in the sequel. But um, However, despite the cash coming in, the movie received negative reviews. On Rotten Tomatoes, it's a 31% from critics. Um, they praised it for the production design and the makeup effects, but they criticized the movie for not offering anything new and compared it unfavorably to Blade. Like Sarah Shawnee of Real.com, she said, it was a low-rent cousin to classic films like Blade and The Matrix. Um... There was also people like Peter Travers of Rolling Stone who said, Your incompetence is most taxing, says the chief vampire Bill Nye, a line that pretty much nails this rusty blade. And Steve Rouds of Internet Reviews gave this movie also a negative review, saying, It hasn't a clue of what it wants to say. It only knows how it wants to look. There were some positive reviews, though, from people like Richard Roper, who awarded the movie a thumbs up on Ebert and Roper, saying, I've been waiting a long time for a Shakespearean werewolf vampire film, and here it is. And Robert Kate Elder um, of the Chicago Tribune, um, right here, also called it a sleek action thriller. So there were some people who liked it, and the thumbs up, for those wondering, is on the back. So, yeah. But the audience side was a lot nicer, though, as it has a 79% on Rotten Tomatoes in that audience side. as a 7 out of 10 on IMDb. So, clearly the audience got their got their bang for their buck, but it actually got some nominations. Uh, one of the actors won Best Male, Kate Beckinsale was nominated for Best Actress, it was nominated for Best Makeup, and a lot of awards were directed towards the sound editing, which actually kind of surprised me. Now, as I said, I did not see this when it came out. I um, I had no interest in seeing it. Um, I, just, I had the same reaction. I thought it was a Blade ripoff. Um, that was until my dad actually picked it up, of all people. And I came into the room while he was watching it, and I sat down and watched it with him. And I liked, I remember liking it. Remember at the time, I liked it for what it was. Um, I mean, and afterwards, somebody actually bought this for me for my birthday day. And that's why you see why I have the widescreen special edition. Uh, very good edition, though, I'll say that. Definitely nice to have this for the collection, um, even though I was expecting it. Uh, commentary, technical commentary, creature effects feature ad, there's a music video, making of Underworld, sights plus sound feature ads, stunts feature ads, the, sight, the sound even has a feature ad, so there's a lot to it. I know there's another edition out, but I'm not getting it because of what I hear with how long it is. But, um, I gave it another rewatch, especially, as I said, with Evolution, and I still liked it for what it was. Granted, I mean, i definitely take Blade over this, um, and I know I shouldn't be comparing this to Blade like so many other critics have, but it feels like it's trying to give that sort of female Blade, which Blade 1 and 2 kicked the shit out of this movie. This I'll say it right now, the Blade 1 and 2 are much better than this film, which... And its sequel, too, which I'll be honest, though, I, I definitely would... I'll watch this over Blade Trinity, which that was a piece of shit, and I'll, I'll watch the sequel, which I'll say right now, just a quick uh, review. I like the sequel more than this one. Um, I'll explain why later. But 
And even that I'll watch over Blade Trinity. But I like this movie. It's just one of those films that's so... One, it's so... It's hard to say. It's so high on exposition. So they have to make it clear that there's going to be a big world here. There. And that's probably, to me, the biggest problem with this film. And I'll explain that later. But it's not a bad film. I like it for what it was. But with the cast in this film, you got Kate Beckinsale playing the main character, as I said, from Pearl Harbor, Van Helsing. She would prize her role in the sequel. You also got Scott Speedman. This is the dude from Triple uh, X State of the Union. He was also in the sequel. Uh, Michael Sheen from Kingdom of Heaven, which I haven't seen. Uh, Shane Broly from Imposter. You also got uh, Bill Nighy. Uh, this is a great character actor from uh, Shaun of the Dead. He was the, the father to Shaun. Uh, he's going to be in Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. So a very interesting cast here. And you'll hear from me how they do. But again, I really like this film. And I can understand why there'd be some people who don't like it. But at, even with the bad reaction of the critics, I, I like it for what it is. I definitely would watch the sequel more, though. I'll explain why later. But anyway, the basic plot of the film is basically we meet this woman named Celine, played by Kate Beckinsale, who we learn is a vampire pyre and is part of this clan that is at war with werewolves called the Lycans, led by this guy named Lucian, played by Michael Sheen, who we learn... The main reason that this feud started was because he found himself falling in love with the leader of the vampire clan's daughter named Victor, played by Bill Nighy. And he had her killed because of this. Because he didn't want to bring in their child, which was a... Which they don't want coming into the world of vampire liking. They don't want that in the world. And Selena's joining them in this battle and helping them fight because she wants vengeance against them because she thinks that the Lycans, well, she's been told that the Lycans are responsible for her parents' death. And now they're trying to go after this kid named Michael, played by Scott Speedman, who's this medical student, and he carries the bloodline that will help bring in the first vampire-werewolf hybrid. And so Celine steps up to protect him, must have the disgust of this, the leader of the clan named Craven, played by Shane Broly, who has attraction of her, much to the dismay of one of the, one of the members of the group, Erica, who also has a liking to him. And so pretty much at some time in the night, the group follow Michael to his apartment, and, he att and they attempt to get him, but Celine comes in to protect him. But during the scuffle... Uh, he ends up getting bitten by one of them and starts to feel himself change. And this, the entire film basically follows Sully trying to protect him from the lichens, as well as later on when, uh, when basically um, they come in to get him. And we discover, like the vampires, I mean to say, when the vampires come in to get him also, because we discovered that Craven has been in league with the lichens and he knows the truth about everything. So, in the hope of getting Craven to listen to her and put him in his place, Selene awakens Victor, played by Bill Nighy, who, um, I already said that who that is, but, um, uh, basically he puts, he puts an even bigger hit piece on Michael. Will Selene be able to protect Michael, or will the vampires have his head? Now, Underworld is a film that I really like. It's a film that has sort of a modern-day gothic horror fairy tale in the vein of Romeo and Juliet meets vampires and werewolves. And I like that idea. I think it worked out really well. And honestly, when I first heard about it, I remember reading about it. I thought it was the stupidest idea ever. But Len proved me wrong. I liked the story. I thought it was very unique. I thought it was an interesting combination of the two genres. I thought it was handled very well, creating a Romeo and Juliet sort of horror story that is done through vampires and wolves with action. I like the story they built around these two clans. That being said, the problem that I said earlier is there's too much exposition. Every single scene feels like there needs to be something said about the group. And it is so goddamn annoying. So much so, there's so much of it, it distracts from the main story or any of the action. Too much exposition is not needed to build a world. And this is a clear example of what you don't do in your first feature. 
here. Too much exposition is not needed. It just was done to an annoying degree here. It's like, we get it. We know it. You said it five minutes ago. Why another five minutes are you examining it again? It just got so goddamn annoying. But besides that, I like the fact that it's set in modern day. It's not a period piece, so I find it more relatable. Um, and it's not, and it's definitely not in the vein of, say, Resident Evil, because these are by Screen Gems. Both these series are by Screen Gems, so, and I think I've heard some people draw some similarities to these. Uh, I like some of the, I'm not a big fan of, fan of the Resident Evil films. They have their moments. I'm just not. One of those dudes who's like in love with them. Granted, I've never played the games, but um, I'll watch this over the Resident Evil films. I'll definitely say that. Um, but besides that, uh, I think it's well done. I like the idea of the science element and the bloodlines. Um, I thought it gave something new to the story. So the story itself is really well done. I think there's a great sense of originality to the story. I also think it's a great looking film. For a $22 million budget movie, it's on the screen. I like the use of black and blues. I know one person sin does not like that. I thought it fit the film well. Um, I like the, I think it suits the film. The shots of the city, the landscapes, like the opening scene with her on top of the tower with the gothic architecture around her. Her, I think looks great. It suits the movie's tone. Um... I like the design of the cities, the models in a lot of scenes, uh, some really good set design. Um, I like the lair where the vampires stay in, that big mansion, kind of showing how suave they are compared to the werewolves who are dirty and really they sleep and really have these weird looking clothes that look like they came from a hobo. But they live in this underground lair, so there's that distinction between the two, and I like that. And I think the action is well done. I think Kate Beckett's Gale handles herself. It's not a shaky cam mess like, say, Aliens vs. Predator. There's some cool action set pieces like the subway scene in the beginning or the train scene scene where they attack those people or the apartment. I like how she shoots a circle around the floor, like sort of a makeshift elevator. Or, um, so the production design and the directing is really good, especially for a first-time director like Len Wiseman. Um, it, he doesn't rely on the editing of like um, music video sort of editing. I think it's done well and everything. So I thought he did well. The acting for this film is also great. Kate, Kate Beckett scale as Celine, who is newsflash, smoking hot, and I know where my hands would be if she was next to me, if you know what I mean. In all seriousness, though, besides looking hot in that leather, um, I thought she had a great presence. I like the fact that at the beginning she's devoted to the, these clans of vampires, and she knows her way around. She's good with guns, um... And you see her kind of narrating about her life, about this war going on. And she's not really... What's the word? She's not... She doesn't look at herself as a hero. She looks at herself as sort of uh, a servant to the clan. And I really like that. I really like that she doesn't really want to see herself as a hero. I thought that... I thought it made her more relatable. And she's not wimpy. She's... Be, she's not annoying, and she's interested in what they have planned and wants to see what they have planned. And Kate Beckett's scale, I thought, did well. I thought she, as I said, she handles herself in the action very well. I don't know if it's her doing her own stunts, but if that's her, that is amazing. But if it's a stunt double, she did a good job, too. So Kate did well. Now, as I said in my Triple X review, State of the Union, I mentioned I don't like Scott Speepin. However, watching this again, his acting is a little bit better than what I remember, but, um, mainly in the last half. Because at the beginning, I was sort of felt like, oh god, the dude who doesn't know what he's going to be, oh my god, he's going to be horrible. But I think his acting got better towards the end. Like when you see him struggling with his transformation, you see him in pain, and it, the camera goes on the inside, you see his, like... You see his chest sort of something going on in his body. I thought that was I thought it really made you see the pain that he was going through and you really feel for him. Just how he's screaming and everything and how they try to tase him and everything. 
thing. I think he does it really well. I think he needs to be more acting more emotionally. I think that's where he's more suited in rather than being the straight sort of dude. And I think he did it well. I also think he does very well with the makeup that he has, like getting into it. You can tell he's getting into the character. I like the look on him, him with the black eyes and everything. Um... Thing. I thought he did it well. So Scott Speedman, I did well for what he. I thought did well for what he had to do. I think the Romeo and Juliet angle is handled well between the two. Um, I think her, him, and uh, Celine have some good chemistry. Um, I like that one point when they when he tries to kiss her and she handcuffs him to the wall. Well, I thought they did well for what they had to do. Um, I know in the sequel it's better explored. Like you see their relationship develop a little bit more. So, yeah, but Michael Sheen, I also think, does a great job. As I could, I guess you could say the anti hero, because at the beginning of the movie, you immediately draw the conclusion of, like, oh, he's the villain. Because at the beginning, you see he's at war, and you explore his backstory a little bit, and you discover that his love of the daughter led to this war. And you can understand why he would start this war. And I thought he had a good presence. I like his appearance with that long hair, sort of a Rob Zombie sort of look. I like him with that knife uh, that he has a lot. Um, and, but I thought he did well for what he has to do. Um, definitely a really cool character, really cool villain. He's not really menacing. He's definitely more in the sense of, of empathetic. Nick, where you really feel for the guy. So, overall, I, th I thought he did a good job. Um, Shane Broly, I thought he played a good douche in this movie. Who you find out is working with the Lycans. It has the hots for Celine and wants to kill not only for his kind but for Celine. But he was a good douche with the long hair. Um, I like the scene where he's like, I want that Lycan's head and he's getting, like, all this stuff happening. I thought he did well. But to me, the best actor is Bill Nye. He's such a fantastic character actor. And here, it's no different. He really puts himself in the role of this character who is brought to life so well. And how... I like how he's the main leader of the clan, and so everybody's on his, their knees, kissing his ass, talking about how great he is. And just how he doesn't talk very modern, and modern, because he doesn't know how... It, advanced English is and and how he looks and how just how he looks when he first comes out I don't know if you can see that well but um with all the knee with all like the blood going into him he's all weak and everything the thing thing I thought he did a very good performance I thought he was uh, at first you think he's likable and then at the end you find out about him but the surprise will leave you surprised. The surprise about him will leave you, you your draw drop. So overall, I thought I did a good job. The cast, for the most part, do a very good job and offer up some very good performance with the side actor. But of course, let's talk about the main attraction, the special effects. And they look awesome. The look of the, the werewolves, I think, look great. Uh... And the vampires themselves, they they look like normal vampires, but I think they look very good. Uh, the makeup on both of them, I think, looks great. The practical makeup on the werewolves, I think, looks good. Um, I definitely agree with what Patrick Totopoulos said. Like, he wanted them to look different with the shirtless, naked sort of look and everything, and all hairy chest and all that. And that but... I thought it was a cool design. I think it looks very good. Um, Patrick Tatopoulos, I think, knows how to design these characters. And overall, I think he did a very fine job with them. They don't look phony or fake at times. There is some CGI, but I think the combination of the two was used very well. Well, um, and th this is definitely better than, say, Cursed or... Yeah, Cursed. This and the sequel are definitely better than Cursed. I'll say that right now. I mean, the effects of the second one are much better, but I thought this was definitely very good. Um, and this film doesn't hold back on the R rating. This is a bloody movie. There is some good gore in this. People get ripped to shreds. There's, like, that train sequence when that, that massacre happens. There are some good gore there. People get bitten. Um, one dude gets his head knocked off. One dude gets shot to shit. Um, just... Really, really a bloody film. 
film. Not in the vein of, say, Saw or Final or um, Hostel, but a bloody movie. Um, sort of like in the vein of, say, The Last Samurai. That's the sort of bloody, gory you're getting. But, yeah, definitely some good chunks of blood, some good practical blood squibs. I agree with what Len Wiseman said he wanted to go more in the practical effects route. I think it looks very good. So yeah, I really like this film. It, I definitely say I like Blade and Blade 2 over this, but I still think it's a very fun and solid action popcorn film. So, yeah. Now, when it comes to cons, a problem that I did have with the movie that I mentioned already was definitely the exposition. I thought they went on for that it went on for too long and they tried to build up a world world the world too much in this film as it went along. I know there's a director's cut where there's even more of that. Really? Lee so I'm not getting that. I'm fine with this edition because because I don't need any more of that. Um, Matt, I don't know how long that will go on for. For 20 hours? I don't know. But I'm fine with this. Um, I thought that was too long. I also felt there was too many sections in between when the action just stopped and it just went into the talking part. I thought that was annoying and just really took a slow down the film more. Because we need more talking. But those are my only problems with the film, because bottom line, Underworld is a blasting good time. It's not as good as Blade, but it's definitely a good ride. It's, it, has a, it has some good, fun, gothic moments that I think anybody looking for a good time will love. And it's definitely a fun ride. Uh, so, if you want to see, if you're going to see the sequel and want a fun ride, I highly recommend Underworld. It is a great Film. If you guys haven't seen that, that's the doorbell. I'm gonna finish this review up, but they get it. But um, yeah, I think this is a great film, and if you're gonna see the sequel and you haven't seen this, I definitely recommend giving it a watch. So overall, definitely check out Underworld if you're looking for a great time. When it comes down to it, I give Underworld an 8.9 out of 10. It is a really great film, really strong movie. So. Yeah, that's Underworld, and definitely a great film. But that's my review for Underworld, and next time I'm going to do a review on Underworld Evolution. You will see my thoughts on that later. And then I'm going to review Final Destination 3, as I said. With all that aside, I'll see you guys later. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of Underworld. Did you guys like the film? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time on the wonderful world of YouTube. Bye.